Hey everyone, Jeff Lee here from Able Cine. Very excited to be joined today by Tim Nagasawa, DIT, and Simon Marsh, Venice Product Manager at Sony. Looking today at the brand new Venice 2. Like the name suggests, it is of course a direct uh, lineage, you know, or follows the lineage of the original Venice, which we all know and love. Uh, lots of great new features. You guys just came off of a shoot all around Brooklyn and New York the past two days, so love to tap both of your brains about that experience. But of course, with all the new features, we have to talk about, I think the thing that stands out the most, probably to most, will be the fact that there's a new sensor. Right? There's a 6K sensor from the Venice, it still exists, and can be swapped, and we'll talk about that. Mm -hmm. But of course, the brand new 8.6K sensor. So Simon, if you don't mind, can you talk a little bit about that and what Absolutely. that looks like? Absolutely, there's, there's a brand new 8.6K sensor, still full frame, so you get all the same um, size formats with the, current, with the current Venice, but the beauty of this new sensor is the quality of it. It is stunning you will right. see 16 stops of dynamic range. The, the, the shadows are so super clean and the highlights just roll off beautifully. It really is a step forward in the next generation of sensor technology. Right, that's amazing. And naturally, as sort of a practical example, uh, there's also a new base, dual base ISOs. It so. is, yes. Um, it's gone from 500 and 2500 on the original Venice. We now at 800 and 3200 as a, as a dual base ISOs now. Yeah. And Tim, you were showing me some of the footage from earlier, and mm -hmm. you guys were doing some stuff at sunset. You guys did some stuff uh, inside of the pool hall. You know, I'm assuming really low light because it's kind of a ver verite style mm -hmm. to shoot. So can you describe a little bit of that? And certainly as a DIT, when you you know, uh, your perspective when you're looking at the, uh, the image come and the scopes and everything that you look at normally. Yeah, absolutely. We, you know, we had a set schedule what we wanted to shoot, but there were times where we saw something and just absolutely loved it and had to run out there and shoot it real quick. But because of how fast it booted up and the amazing um, latitude, we were able to just run out there, shoot a sunset or shoot a sunrise and get that shot then move back into what we were originally going to shoot with no worries at all, knowing that all the information there, right. all, you know, the the color's amazing, the latitude's amazing, exposure's amazing. Yeah, of course, the stunning latitude, like you mentioned, super yeah, critical. Absolutely. That roll off. It's uh, incredible. Yeah, from the bridge, from some of that footage, mm -hmm. is just really eye candy. Uh, of course, all the same sort of, or not same, but all the sort of features that we all know and love, like the built-in ND filters, right? That's yes, still we exists. still maintain the eight, eight stops of ND. Uh, the, the other really big feature of the camera is, if I don't mind me turning it around, is that we now have internal recording. There's right. no requirement for an AXS R7 recorder now to record XOCN. Right. Or, so we now have instead, where was the uh, original S by S slots, is now AXS slot, right. right media. Right. So. So built in, no longer the need for the AXS R7. Exactly. Uh, so it makes the body significantly shorter, shorter than a R7 right. and a Venice combination. And that lends to that shoot that you guys are just on, where you guys are jumping in and out of vans. I'm sure that helped. I'm sure the uh, operator or the AC appreciated the fact that it's a much smaller package. Absolutely. And we were on a previous shoot um, in, in British Columbia. Uh, we were on, on drones, on gimbals, in a Hydroflex, in an F1 shot over. We put it into anything we could possibly think of to test the camera, and it's, it's performed flawlessly. So we're, we're very, very happy with it. And the shorter length yeah. makes it a lot easier to rig now. Yeah, right. I would say definitely the ergonomics, the size, the weight, and the balance work really, really well. Yeah, that's yeah, the, the feedback we've had from operators is they feel like it's, it's perfect now for them. Right. Yeah, and it just avoids any additional complications of having to worry about two sets of media cards. It's just really straightforward, easy. Yeah. Use your existing AXS cards, uh, which are super fast. I'm sure you appreciate that when you're oh, yes. stuck at the end of the day trying to offload yeah. <laughs> and ingest and make proxies and whatnot. Um, of course, you've also made a couple of changes too, right? The codec variety has been expanded a little bit in that you now have ProRes uh, 4K internally. There is 4K ProRes as well. You can, so you can either shoot XOCN as a XT, ST, or LT but you can now have 4K ProRes as an option as well. Right. Yeah, I'm sure a lot of folks who may be doing some stuff that doesn't require as much grading would certainly appreciate the direct-to-video sort of approach. Exactly, with the and that's available as 4444 or 422HQ. Um, in the future, we will be implementing the XQ as well for okay. ProRes. Yeah, excellent. Um, you know, other small things I think that we noticed and we appreciate, you know, you, uh, instead of the four pin Hiroshi for accessory power, it's now become a limo, a two pin yes, limo. Yes, two pin limo, yes. Yeah, exactly. So a little bit more industry standard in mm -hmm. some ways. So I'm sure the crews would certainly appreciate that. Yeah, there's, there's some other ergonomic changes we've made. Of mm -hmm. course, uh, the Ethernet port, which was on the operator side, has now moved to the assistant side of the, of the, of the camera. That's, that's, a, that's a been very requested by a lot of, a lot of our operators. Uh, the mounting positions should feel very familiar to anybody. There should be no issues rigging it uh, with mm -hmm. third-party accessories. It should be very easy to do because right. everything, everything just will bolt on to the, to the camera body. Because right. it's literally, it's, it's actually 15 millimeters longer 
than a standard Venice, but it's 44 millimeters shorter than a Venice in an R7. Right. So it makes it a lot more compact body. Yeah, and I know there's a lot of engineering that had to go into it, especially with the AK sensor. Uh, you know, both of you know as well as anyone uh, that additional heat is generated off more photosites. So there's a lot of engineering that had happened. Uh, th that is true. But it, it does have additional cooling fins on the back of the mm -hmm. sensor. Uh, they, they are larger, but the camera seems to run significantly cooler than a Venice. Okay. There is so much airflow. They've, they've the cavity inside of the body, and they're drawing much more air through. So it actually runs quieter and a lot cooler than the current Venice in, 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 in our testing that we've done right now. Right. Yeah. But uh, I also think it's interesting, and, and we mentioned this beautiful new 8.6K sensor, but what is important, I think, to a lot of owners, a lot of folks that have used these cameras, is that they are familiar with the existing 6K sensor that yes. they know and love. And I think the interoperability between the two, or the fact that you can cut between the two, you know, maybe, you know, Tim, you could speak a little bit to that when you're looking at the footage side by side, you know, if you're ever doing like an A-B shoot, you know, where a cam, of course, is the 8.6, and maybe the B cam is, you know, the 6K sensor. Yeah, very, very complementary to each other, you know. Yeah, and and color science. We actually, we actually did a, a shoot just for that with Claudio mm -hmm. Miranda. Oh, great. So we shot Venice, and we shot Venice to 8K side by side, and then intercut them. Um, and Claudio is, is doing a behind the scenes video for that to, sit, to give his feedback on how they nicely they cut together right. and, the, and the improvements he sees from the Venice too. Right. So and he's a notorious kind of gear, uh, he picks apart gear I should say. Oh, yes, he likes true. to really analyze the pixels mm -hmm. and, and I mean this with all due respect of right. course because no. I obviously respect his body. And, and that's why we like to use yeah. <laughs> work with that. Well that's the thing, he'll, he'll give you the honest feedback. Yeah. yeah that you, you, know, you take back to HQ or back mm -hmm. to the team, but uh, I think that's important when you have folks like him, you know, yes. uh, pixel peeping. So the fact that you can intercut between the two, uh, so you're, you're continuing the lineage and the, you know, the Venice will continue to, I don't imagine that, personally speaking, going away anytime soon. No, I don't think so. Yeah, there, continue there, to be the workforce of the industry. There's so many in the marketplace, they're, gonna, they're always gonna keep working. Yeah, I yeah. agree. Uh, it just sort of gives everyone the option now. If they need to, higher resolution, or maybe you're doing some plates or other yes. kind of VFX-based work, mm -hmm. uh, they now have a higher resolution. So what other sort of, you know, other than the, the topics we've talked about, some of the ergonomic changes, um, what other sort of development things that can you tell us about you know, internally? Well, the, the, the key thing that you mentioned earlier, Jeff, was that we can actually put a 6K sensor in this body. Mm -hmm. So it's actually a sensor interchangeable camera. So you can, if you want to shoot 8.6K, you can. If you want to shoot 6K, you can do that as well. So if you maybe had original Venice and you had Venice 2 side by side and you wanted to have everything match, right. all the resolutions, all the uh, data rates and everything, you could just put a 6K um, sensor in here and it's identical. It just boots up as a 6K camera. And, so, right. and you put an 8K, 8K sensor in it, it boots up as an 8K camera. Right, and I think that's important. I'm sure there's, a lot there's of- There's no installation of firmware or anything like that. It just does it automatically. Right. And you know, the original Venice and of course Venice 2, one of the earliest sort of groundbreaking features was the fact that it is a user swappable or you know, movable sensor. Right, with, with the Rialto system, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. The optical block, the ND filters all mm -hmm. kind of come along. There's yeah. a couple of screws, so it's really user-friendly. It doesn't require a bench. Yeah, exactly. Um, and I understand this course, uh, coming in soon, there'll be a new version of the Rialto. There will be an 8K version of the AK, Rialto, yes. Um, right. Probably within a year of, of launch of the, uh, of the AK Venice 2. Right. Yeah, I think that's to be expected. I think everyone mm -hmm. likes using it. You mentioned a lot of the drone work and gimbal work, mm -hmm. you know, or maybe special to use like mounting on a helmet or something. Uh, and you know, the, the operator yeah, wears it as a backpack. Yeah, people have done some crazy things yeah. with Rialto. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's really great and innovative and, mm -hmm. and very forward thinking. So Tim, I definitely want to pick your brain. Uh, as a DIT, as the person that looks at, you know, essentially your pixel peeping as well, and then looking at scopes, I want your input on what you're seeing as far as the image quality, things like skin tone and highlight roll off, and, and you know, looking into the shadows and what, that, what the shadow detail looks like. So can you talk a little bit about your experience? I know you've shot a lot with this camera uh, very recently. So love to hear your perspective on, on some of those aspects. Yeah, it's very versatile. Um, we put it through its paces for sure, uh, very clean, Blacks, uh, like like Simon said, the highlights roll off very beautifully. Um, I just noticed the um, how the um, especially the skin tones just kind of uh, roll off very very gracefully. Um, and you know we're 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 putting in situations of uh, shooting underwater, shooting mm -hmm. drone, shooting uh, sunrises, shooting sunsets. 
uh, shooting in forest where it's very, very dark, going into direct sunlight, and everything's holding very, very well. Um, be able to, yeah, just be, being able to shoot in any conditions at any time is, is key. Yeah, and, and earlier you described the situation where you you were shooting, um, I think, a sunset or maybe a yeah. sunrise, but you yeah. just you wanted to keep a certain t-stop. Yeah, and you just of course rolled in the NDs. Yeah, it was very easy while we were rolling um, during the sunset just to, to keep. Uh, I think we we're shooting at like a five six, and to mm -hmm. keep that um, depth of field, we just kept on rolling in the ND throughout throughout the, the sunrise. Tim, you were recently uh, on a shoot with Rob McLaughlin for quite some time. My understanding is he's probably the one single person that shot the most with Venice Two mm -hmm. at this point in time. Uh, but what I didn't realize, uh, which is quite amazing to me, is that you guys only shot natural light. There was no fixed lighting sources or anything brought in. Absolutely. Yeah, was, I mean, everything looks so incredibly natural. Mm -hmm. um, it came to the point where we were getting to, if you see something with your naked eye and it looks really good, we just start shooting it. And it came out better than what we actually saw. Okay. Camera okay. saw it to the lights and the, the shadows The camera better. was actually seeing stuff that we couldn't see with the naked eye. Right. Incredible, isn't it? especially at nighttime. Yeah. Yeah, certainly nighttime. Certainly, I, I can certainly imagine that you know, mm -hmm. just the you know uh, ability to pull out detail from the mm -hmm. shadows. Yeah. And then, of course, you were in those situations, just flipped to thirty-two hundred. No worries, no concerns about noise or not. Absolutely, just clean. That's an amazing point. The fact that the camera is picking up stuff that you guys can't see uh, with the naked eye. But I think what's still important, what everyone always focuses on, uh, as we should. Uh, we're all selfish creatures, right? We're human. So we want to be able to see the skin tone. We want to be able to see how that renders, especially when you're shooting a diverse cast, you know, in terms of complexion. So, uh, Tim, from your perspective, you know, how, how is that handled, you know, still with the, with the color science within the Sony Venice too? Yeah, we had a, a, a variety of different skin tones we used just to test it out. and. Um, you know, all the details there, it was just a very soft roll-off of the, of the exposure and color and the skin tones. It's just very impressive. Right. Maintains that beauty, but you still have the sharpness that you want in yeah. key focal areas, mm -hmm. but it's not hyper-sharp, I suppose. Is right. that a good way to describe it? And, and no use of filters at all, and still mm -hmm. getting that, that beautiful roll-off of all the skin tones. Right. Yeah, I mean, I'm, naturally a lot of that can be attributed to the glass, but I think a lot of it is how the sensor sees it on the back end and that processing uh, power. Uh, well, Glenn, yeah. One of the shoots we were on, uh, we actually just used the Zeiss Supreme Primes because they're so clean. Mm -hmm. uh, Rob McLaughlin did not want to have the lenses impart anything on the, ish on the image right. at all. He wanted it as clean as possible so we actually see what the sensor does. Right. And then we, when we see his piece uh, finally graded, that, that's is what you'll be able to take away from it. I think that's a really important point you bring up. We as creatives, we have a choice now with optics. You know, yeah. super neutral, super clean, or something that has a little bit more character or flair to it, uh, quite literally flair. Yeah. But what's important is that the sensor gives you the best possible performance, so then you make that decision on mm -hmm. the optic side, if it's you will. It's an know. artistic choice at that point, yeah. Yeah, so that's really great. Um, and a little bit of discussion on the workflow, too. Uh, you know, I think this is a misconception still, even though it's many, many, many years, we're all used to shooting raw. You know, I think my phone has raw these days, and <laughs> not, not, not that I use it, but uh, I think that it is some misconception still to some point that you know the files are big and it's you know not manageable. So as someone who's directly working with the files, can you speak a little bit to what that's like on your on your uh, sure. side? Sure. Yeah, um, they are large files, but extremely stable and fast. We found ourselves in a situation where we were kind of running around Brooklyn, so I was downloading and transferring and um, making proxies in the back of a van <laughs> on a laptop, and I was able to keep up with um, the shooting day and get done pretty quickly. Um, mostly from the, because of the support of the software and hardware from Sony and third-party party products. Um, right. It's just really great and really fast right. and uh, complete confidence. Yeah, I think that's really ultimately the most important thing. You are in many ways the image keeper, the gatekeeper to the image yeah. on set. And you, you know, the director relies on you, the DP relies on you to say, yes, we got it. Yeah, and yeah. I felt great walking away at the end of the day knowing that everything is there and secure and, and checked with no worries at all. Excellent. And actually, speaking of some of your tools, I'm curious too where your workflow was. I know with the Ethernet port, you can do uh, direct live grading with Palm Fort Live Grade. Uh, did you do any of that for, this, for any of the particular shoots, either the most recent one or the one with? No, uh, much. we didn't do live grade, but you're correct. There will be AC CDL control right. via Ethernet or Wi Fi using uh, Palm Fort. So that we're very excited to, to uh, introduce that at yeah. the, the same launch time as the camera. Yeah, it's great. And, and then the CDL is saved as metadata to the file. Exactly, it's embedded right. in the metadata. Right. So you actually goes into post with the, with the file. It's not a sidecar; it's actually embedded in the MXFs. 
No, that's great. So I think it gives someone like like Tim working on a day-to-day -day basis the flexibility, depending, right? You can either uh, you know burn in a look with your console or or do it as a CDL mm -hmm. and have it come carried aside as a as a metadata file. Exactly. Yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's that's fantastic. I'm really again, like I mentioned, I think probably a few times at this point, really excited about this development. I think it shows that Sony is looking and listening and taking all the feedback from all the folks that you you know creatively collaborate with, such as Tim and then building a product such as this, which is sort of the evolution of an yeah. already a great platform. Yeah, it's, de it's definitely an evolution, yes. Oh, We've taken much feedback from, from our end users, and it always goes back to the design group in Japan, and uh, this is the end result. Yeah. So looking forward to seeing more, of course, with this. Um, we know, you know, we can't wait for them to hit the shelves, as the expression goes, mm -hmm. but uh, you know, keeping everyone posted on that. Uh, Simon and Tim, thank you so much for joining us today. I really appreciate you all of your insight and knowledge and certainly experience coming off of the back of multiple shoots with this, especially. Uh, I think that just about wraps us up today for looking at the new Sony Venice 2. Uh, I really appreciate everyone joining us as well. Thank you for watching, and I think that's it for now. Take care.